Let's talk about significant figures and multiplication or division. What is the rule? This time, the rule is keep the fewest number of significant figures. Keep the fewest number of sig figs in the calculation. Now I'm going to set up a typical chemistry calculation here. It's not going to make sense to us yet, but if we were to do a calculation, we might have 1.65 grams of magnesium, and we might use the molar mass of magnesium, which is 24.30 grams of magnesium for one mole. There might be a reaction that lets us know that for every one mole of magnesium, there are two moles of hydrochloric acid. And then there might be 0 0.6742 moles of hydrochloric acid for one liter of solution. And again, this is not a calculation that we've done yet, but it has lots of numbers in them. <laughs> and uh, these are numbers that we'll see, so it's, it's good practice. All right. So um, let's just talk about sig figs here. So it turns out that these two numbers are counted numbers, which means they are exact and have infinite sig figs. We talked about exact and inexact numbers before. We talked about how they have infinite sig figs. This is where the payoff occurs because this two and this one have infinite sig figs. They do not limit the number of sig figs in this fewest part. Then from there, uh, oh, and the same thing for this one here. This one and this one are counted numbers as well. They will not limit the number of sig figs. So we're trying to say here there are 24.30 grams of magnesium for one, exactly one mole, and any error in this is actually in the 24.30 part. All right, so now we have four sig figs for this number. These are measured numbers. Four sig figs and three sig figs. So the smallest number of sig figs in our answer will be three. So in our calculation is three, that means our answer will have three sig figs. And just to show you what that answer will be, again, we don't know how to do this calculation yet, but we will see it in this course, 1.65. So I like to multiply all the numbers across the top first, then divide by all the numbers on the bottom. I've got times one, which doesn't matter, times two, which doesn't change my answer anyway, and then times one, which I won't do, then divide by, uh, there's my divide by, 24.3. I don't need that last zero for the calculator, though it doesn't hurt if you put it in either, and then divide by 0 0.6742. And my answer here, which will be in units of liters because my grams of magnesium cancel, my moles of magnesium cancel, and my moles of HCl cancel, my answer will be liters, 0 0.20. Well, we said our answer was to three sig figs, this next digit's a four, so we don't have to round anything. And our final answer here to three sig figs is 0 0.201 liters. Now let's determine the density of canola oil. So um, density is going to be uh, D equals mass over volume.
And we're gonna do this because this allows us to do both sets, addition or subtraction and division in this case. I've got an empty graduated cylinder and it weighs 26.64. I fill it up with some canola oil and now it weighs 28.24 grams. The difference between these two is going to be the mass of my canola oil. I am writing these lecture notes up at my house, hence the fruits and the canola oil. Uh, 28.24, 26.64, these are both grams. So to find the mass, I have to subtract them. That'll give me, um, right, so the 26.64 is just the graduated cylinder. And I always use my calculator to do this. 28.24 minus 26.64. I get, my, my calculator says 1.6. But I draw my line and I get that I need that last zero because my answer needs to have three significant figures. Calculators do not do scientific figures, but while well, calculators are, are true friends in this course, we need to know how to do significant figures too. All right, so this is the mass of canola oil. That's gonna go in the numerator. The volume of canola oil right here is going to be, well, we're looking straight across. Took my photo of this straight across. And the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus is right there. Let's see, 1, 1 1.5, 1 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. I'm gonna go with 1.81 milliliters. You could go with 1.82 milliliters as well. I don't think you can go with 1.80. It is above that line. Um, and again, there are multiple correct answers for this within the experimental error or uncertainty for this calculation. Anyway, so D is gonna be mass over volume. It's gonna be 1.60 grams over 1.81 grams, wait a minute, sorry, milliliters. Doing this math, I get 1.60 divided by 1.81, all right, <laughs> sig figs. I have three and three, so my final answer must have three sig figs, 0 0.884, and none of my units cancel. Density does have units of grams per milliliter, 0 0.884 grams per milliliter. All right, let's do it again. Same graduated cylinder, but I added more canola oil to it. Now I've got my um, calculation again for subtraction. 30.37. Minus 26.64, 3.73, three sig figs, right? Good, everything's uh, looking good there. My volume this time, looking straight across, well, the four line is right here, 4.1, uh, I could give that 4.10, 4.11 milliliters. When you punch in your numbers, all both of those numbers will be acceptable. And let's see, density equals 3.73 grams over, I don't know, 4.10. Three point seven three divided by four point one zero. 
this time we get 0 0.9, 0, 9. That 9, if we do to the 7, is going to round up to a 0. I get 0 0.910 to 3 sig figs grams per milliliter. And looking at these two values, I can get them both on the same page there. So if we did a third one, we could take an average, do our percent error. Actually, we don't know the correct value, but we could do a standard deviation.